Hi, welcome to Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast from BlackBerry. With this series, we're diving into what the future of transportation just might look like. So don't just stand there, get in. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I'm glad to be here at CES 2023. And last year, everybody was here to catch COVID. This year, they're catching another, I think it's Ivy fever. I'm starting to get this feeling of, uh, and I better check my temperature, but I'm getting really excited about Ivy becoming a real product and um, that it's going to be hitting the streets this year. So uh, we have one of the premier experts in BlackBerry Ivy and the automotive space and our senior executive. And uh, Vito, would you please introduce yourself? Yep, Vito Gialorenzo. I'm senior vice president and general manager of BlackBerry Ivy. So in a lot of ways, this is your baby. And I can, I can tell that you're feeling some, uh, some paternal pride in the milestones that you're able to talk about today at, at this event. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the journey that Ivy's been on. Yeah. So Ivy journey really overlaps with my journey at BlackBerry. So I was hired to run corporate development for our CEO. And one of the, the tasks I had was to build a strategic partnerships with Amazon. And from that strategic partnerships, um, we agree, we created an agreement to co-develop Ivy with, with Amazon. And so I've basically been working on Ivy since it was just an idea, let's do something together with AWS. Um, and when I fast forward two years ago, we announced we wanted to actually do something and what that something was, we signed an agreement with Amazon. We started writing code a few months later, and less than two years from then, we now have a platform that is generally, generally available, it's, it's ready, and it's shipping in vehicle in China next year with our first uh, design win production. So it's an incredible journey, and I think the team is very excited. I think as very, every startup, starting something from zero and getting the result is always very exciting, very rewarding you feel an emotional attachment to the project. And I think that's, that's what we feel. So the Ivy fever has been hard for us. Well, I just want to pause to congratulate you and the team because that is really a monumental uh, un endeavor that you've undertaken. And um, AWS is a huge global company. For them to focus so much of their resources on this and say that this really is their, is their primary way of participating in the future of the automotive industry, it's really it's really a huge step for BlackBerry and and for AWS. So, congratulations! Yeah, yeah thank on, you on doing that. We were lucky. We were a lucky startup because we could um, benefit from several decades of automotive success um, with our QNX core OS platform. So, Amazon saw the technology, the footprint, the credibility we had in the industry. And we were the natural partner for them to build this with us. Um, so we had that starting point, but obviously getting everybody together and really doing it took, took a bit of time, but uh, it went pretty well. We're very happy. Well, and now we're seeing what it was all about right. because we're, we're just a couple months away from a general availability of Ivy Tell us a little bit about uh, what is the, the status of IV today? So, exactly, IV is, you know, we're, you know, putting the last touch to the last release that we're going to um, uh, actually make available in, in May. That's basically, it's ready. The, the platform is ready to be installed in uh, production vehicles and run in the streets. And uh, we have already a version that is, you know, few version older that is running in the streets of Shanghai. It's working very well um, with our customer Dongfeng, and uh, that production it's going to start uh, towards the end of this year, early next year. And we are Ivy is already uh, pre-integrated and available in several uh, cockpit and hardware platform of our partners, so Bosch, Pateo. It's available also in a in virtual platform with Amazon AWS. So customers, and it's already integrated with all of our ecosystem partner solutions like Compredict, RIQ, Electra. So 
every customer can try and buy uh, Ivy if they want virtually through an AWS instance or physically through a, a Bosch uh, or Padeo or any other tier one integration that they want. And it's really just the tip of the iceberg in a lot of ways of what is possible when you have access to all of the data that's, that's being compounded within the vehicle by all of the sensors um, in that vehicle. Uh, the cockpit, I guess, is where it all comes together for the driver, for the operator, to some degree for the passengers. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the interface right. that they're going to experience that is going to put them in, in closer contact to what's actually happening with the vehicle than has, has ever really occurred in a production vehicle. Is, am I overstating it? No, no. Look, uh, Ivy can run in every domain of the car. So it can run in the cockpit, in the ADAS, control in the gateway. Um, what exact, very simplistically, what Ivy allows you to do, allows any developer of any solution, any application, to build a software sensor that is very easy to build, drop it into the car, and that sensor will gather all the data your application needs, process it, and give it back to, with an insight, whatever that insight the application needs. So it's really a probe into a car for any application developer. And we make it very easy uh, to do, which hasn't been so easy in the past, so developers can just do it without knowing anything about the underlying vehicle, anything about the underlying signal, they just ask what they want and the car will, will return that insight. So they can apply their real expertise um, and not have to engineer how to talk to the car, how to harvest all of this rich data from the car. They can take the product of, of what Ivy is making possible and then, and then work their magic with it. Exactly. And are, Tell us about some of the magic that you would see if you were, if you were here uh, with us at CES and maybe sat in that, uh, that uh, Grand Cherokee yep. down there. What are, what are some of the things that, that uh, some of the use cases okay. them? Okay, so that Jeep Cherokee has a Bosch cockpit with QNX and Ivy installed in it, and Ivy is powering few solutions. So one solution is predictive maintenance for tire and brake wear. So things that normally you need to physically inspect to know if you know your brake right. pads are, are done. Now it's done via machine learning models provided by uh, one of our partner and portfolio companies, because we invested in them, called Compredict out of Germany. So they have a machine learning model. That machine learning model just is going to predict, based on your driving, that your brake pads or your tire need, need replacement. And that, that's all done through a software sensor that runs in the car that they they built and they translated into basically IB. Another solution is secure payments. So uh, powered by another one of our portfolio company and partners called uh, CarIQ. They have, through IV's machine learning sensors, they are putting into the vehicle the payment authentication and the merchant identification of, uh, for a car. So when the car goes and pays, the same way your credit card is usually authenticated by the chipset reader, this card is going to be authenticated by an IV machine learning at the hardware level. Uh, so again, making payments secure and possible in a car through IV by authenticating the car using the various signals and status of the element of the car. IV is also integrated in this car with Alexa, Amazon Alexa. So you can use Alexa control to interact with this solution. So Alexa will tell you that the brake pad status, what it could be. And uh, they can order new ones uh, probably from Amazon. Could do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very easy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we have other solutions. We also have um, a cockpit uh, solution from Pateo, our Chinese uh, tier one partner. We couldn't get the Voya uh, Dongfeng car uh, that is running this from China to here in time, but we have a nice video that shows uh, our Ivy solution uh, in the streets of Shanghai. It, it is a long uh, drive from China. It's a lot of yeah. drive from China. It's a little bit complicated these days, but you know we have the platform there, and that is showing a battery management solution for um, EV range prediction and optimization for this electric SUV, uh, and that's powered by another one of our portfolio company partner, 
uh, called Electra Vehicles out of Boston. So really, it's, it's first generation of production technology with Ivy that it, it happens to be addressing the most important pain points and wear points for electric vehicles because the engines don't wear out, the batteries don't, you know, maybe eventually they wear out, but, it's, but um, it, it happens to be the brakes and the tires, right? That's where the maintenance is. Um, I would have loved on my old Volvo to have it tell me your brake pads are going to go out before I scored the rotors again and it cost me, you know, $2,000 to fix it. Right. So um, it, it's, I, I can see where the focus is going now to what is most important in the marketplace. But again, it's really the tip of the iceberg of what's possible. Yeah, yeah I, I, exactly. And Ivy is a general platform. So as I said, you can build any application you want and Ivy will let you take data out of that system. So I sometimes make the analogy with mobile phones. I don't think any of us even imagine the type of things we do with phones today, like 20 years ago. Yeah. But once that platform was opened up and that data was made uh, available and you could stream that data into the cloud for a cloud development developer, then you have billions of people trying to figure out something. And I think exactly that's what happened we know that right now there are very specific needs that automaker fleet manager drivers and passengers like us need for saving money either either when you build the car when you run the car or when you maintain and operate the car and but also um, generating new revenue for things that like insurance maintenance uh, payment like tolling parking uh, that is stuff that is already happening in a car. It's just full of friction. It's not as easy as you do it with a phone. And Ivy will allow to make these applications better. But we're already working with a lot of automakers um, that are trying Ivy to do more advanced things, like improving your um, autonomous driving algorithm, improving your scene detection algorithm. You know, the car needs to know what happened, why your ADAS didn't work, why the car broke down, uh, or why there was an accident, God yes. forbid. And so Ivy can detect that something is happening, process that data, send it back to the developers who can then improve their machine learning models. So there are, I would say, more intuitive, mundane application of Ivy, and there are some very advanced application of Ivy that customers are using to improve the, and the technology that runs on top of our systems. Well, if when we're here a year from now, um, this probably be a three-story booth by then. Uh, what do you think are some of the things that we'll that we'll be talking about at CES 2024 that are building on the shoulders of what of what has happened so far? Okay, I think we will definitely uh, have more customers and more use cases running on Ivy. We we feel very good about our pipeline. We feel very good about the the value that our product offers to customers. So I think there's gonna be different cars, different use cases. We're gonna have more partners. We want to keep um, bringing new solutions to to uh, to the Ivy ecosystem uh, of partners. So there's gonna be more safety, more maybe ATAS and autonomous solutions. Uh, there's gonna be maybe more around commerce and monetization, insurance. So there are a lot, I think there's going to be just a lot of new applications for, for Ivy with more and more partners and customers. Okay. And, uh, I, you know, there's no better proving ground for autonomous driving, in my opinion, than the streets of Shanghai. Or, you know, I haven't actually been to Shanghai, but I've been to a lot of places in Asia. And I watched video of autonomous cars there. And, you know, you've got passengers two-wheel vehicles, three-wheel vehicles, four-wheel vehicles. Um, so it's, it's going to be a much richer platform with all of the data that's been collected and, and brought back into the system. Yeah, I agree. We are very excited about our, that our first win um, and our first production is in China for a, a lot of reasons. Like also because Chinese electric vehicle markets is, I think, the fastest growing or one of the fastest growing markets in the world. Uh, they are very fast, not just at producing cars, but also at adopting new technology. So it's the best uh, breeding ground to take, bring our platform and expand it from with Pateo 
from Dongfeng and in, in, in with Dongfeng as a customer, but also with other automakers. So great market, one of the best markets to start with. And also, as you said, lots of data, lots of, it's a very dynamic market in a lot, in a lot of reasons, including yes. the type of data that you can collect there. Yes. Uh, so that's a, it's a great way to start, I think, our Ivy commercial journey. Okay. Um, is there anything that you would like to add for people that are thinking about uh, and checking out uh, BlackBerry Ivy uh, to integrate into their platforms and products or to, uh, to become a developer on yeah. that platform. What would you say to them? I would say, I think most of these people most likely know of BlackBerry QNX as the trusted Edge OS foundation. And I want these people to know that both the QNX and the Ivy team have built a lot of new solutions and products that are taking this foundation that we have and now help them build new solutions in their vehicles. And we have been very cautious about offering only the type of complex middleware software stuff that it's very hard to make. A customer should not use their resource to do that we are going to be able to outsource it. They're going to be able to outsource it to, from us better and cheaper. Um, and uh, we're making it very intuitively to use. Leveraging the cloud, uh, leveraging AWS uh, as a partner. So they should come and check out how, and talk to our partners to tell how easy has it been for guys like Compredict or CarIQ to take their cloud solution and put it into a car. Uh, we are making that extremely easy and we are ready to show it. We have cloud demos, we have hardware demos, we can run workshop to very easily prove them that we can make their life much easier and they can use their resources to do the real undifferentiated, uh, real differentiating work uh, to build their applications and leave the undifferentiated work to us. We're happy with being undifferentiated yeah. and letting you showcase your brand through these products. Thank you so much for joining us, Vito, right. and sharing this. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. That's the end of our episode for today. If you'd like more information on the topics or our guests, please check out blackberry.com slash podcast. Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast, is available wherever you get your podcast, And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest episodes. Thanks for joining us.